years, many investors and employees at Space Exploration Technologies have regarded the company's number two executive Gwyn Shotwell as the adult in the room at the boundary-pushing rocket company founded by Elon Musk. Yes, I'm talking about SpaceX. Her acolytes have lauded Shotwell's ability to translate her visionary boss's wild ideas into a business that has become the most valuable venture-backed startup in America. One that has won key clients, such as NASA, and has launched an ambitious satellite-based internet service. Respect for Shotwell has run so deep at the company that some long-timers have a saying. They work for Gwyn, not Elon. So why is this saying ringing true for the senior employees, and how did it come about? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Gwen Shotwell was recently honored by the Rotary National Award for Space Achievement, or R. NASA Foundation's 2023 National Space Trophy. Our NASA's National Space Trophy honors an American every year who has made major contributions to the U.S. space exploration programs. The foundation was founded by the Space Center Rotary Club of Houston, Texas in 1985 to organize and coordinate an annual event to recognize outstanding achievements in space and create greater public awareness of the benefits of space exploration. Hired back in 2002, it's entirely possible that SpaceX wouldn't have survived if her sales acumen hadn't convinced NASA to take a billion dollar bet on the company back in 2008. But NASA ultimately took that bet right when SpaceX needed it most, and Shotwell went on to help secure another several billion dollars of launch contracts from all possible sectors. She became president and COO after navigating NASA's first major SpaceX contract back in 2008 and still holds both positions 15 years later. As chief operating officer, Shotwell was, by definition, already overseeing Starbase operations and the Starship program to some degree. It's possible that her day-to-day -day work mainly focused on SpaceX's Dragon, Falcon, and Starlink programs. But it would be almost impossible for a COO with a reputation as good as hers not to pay close attention to a program that likely represents half or more of SpaceX's R&D spending. It's little surprise then that Musk explicitly said that Shotwell will assume oversight of the company's Starship program and Starbase facilities, seemingly stepping in for Elon Musk as the CEO shifts his focus to Twitter. Interestingly enough, rather than going all in on its inaugural launch attempt, Shotwell said that the company is focusing on ways to streamline rocket production. There's a lot of little things to get done, especially because we weren't really focusing on the orbital ship. We were focusing on the production systems that will build the ship. We know how to get to orbit, she added confidently. The company has already made major strides toward its first shot at launching Starship into space. Last month, SpaceX successfully completed its first wet dress rehearsal, involving a fully fueled up Starship and super heavy prototype stack. But there's still one big hurdle to overcome, regulatory approval from the Federal Aviation Administration. SpaceX has yet to be certified for launch, something that could delay the orbital launch attempt. I think we'll be ready to fly right at the time frame that we get the license, Shotwell said at the press conference. In fact, Shotwell has also begun to sell the yet unproven Starship launch system for commercial launches for many years. Back in March of 2020, the company released an initial payload user's guide for the large rocket, and discussions have been ongoing. However, Shotwell reiterated that the company essentially sells customers a launch capability, not a specific vehicle. We have signed deals where we can pick whether it's a Falcon or a Starship, she said. We want to provide launch services, and we want to provide it in the most cost-effective way for us and our customers, and the most reliable way for us and our customers. So we really want that to be in our hands, and we know we have work to do with the insurance community, just like we did with Falcon 9, just like we did with Falcon 9 Reuse. So there's still work to go, but hopefully people trust that we are going to do what we intend to do. If there are technical problems with Starship and it's late, Shotwell said that the company will be able to fall back on the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy vehicles, but she said SpaceX has already removed a lot of the risk with its Starship test program. We certainly de-risked that program pretty massively with that, she said of the flight. 
You always have to schedule concerns and issues, but the amount of flight hardware down in Boca with that team is really impressive. In April of 2021, even NASA fully bought into Starship, awarding SpaceX a $2.9 billion contract to develop the system and create a version of the rocket's upper stage that can land astronauts and cargo on the moon. In 2022 alone, that human landing system contract earned SpaceX more than $800 million, and NASA's attachment to Starship has made the program's success even more essential. Starship is the culmination of a lot of what SpaceX has been working toward in its 20 years of existence. Shotwell took the plunge and joined the then-unknown company because, like Musk, she believed there were faster, more efficient ways to do aerospace. With its Falcon 1 and Falcon 9 programs, the company endured some growing pains. But now with the Starship program, it can draw upon those lessons learned and move faster. SpaceX is building Starship vehicles at a rate of greater than one per month, and have been trying to improve that pace since 2021. The scale of the project and rate at which the company is building these massive rockets is unprecedented in the space industry. We don't do it to embarrass people, but we certainly are happy to provide examples on how industries and companies do better, Shotwell said. We're not here to be negative, we're here to provide some objective evidence and some truths that you can do better in this industry and this industry deserves to be better. Aside from that, last year it was Shotwell who gave NASA Administrator Bill Nelson assurances about Elon Musk's controversies at Twitter and that it will potentially not affect the Starship program. Nelson said he asked Gwen Shotwell, the president and COO of SpaceX, earlier this month if controversy at Twitter would affect business at SpaceX, which is a crucial partner for NASA. Tell me that the distraction that Elon might have on Twitter is not going to affect SpaceX, Nelson said he told her, according to NBC News. I assure you, it is not, Shotwell responded, according to Nelson. You have nothing to worry about. Nelson then shared that he is not concerned about SpaceX, which Musk runs as CEO, and that he was reassured by Shotwell. I hugged her with a smile on my face because I know she is running that thing. She's running SpaceX, he said. And as for Musk's tweets, Nelson said he's not focusing on them beyond the friendly exchange with Shotwell. The proof is in the pudding, Nelson said. Look at what SpaceX is delivering in crew and cargo to the space station. In short, thanks to well-placed executives behind Musk, SpaceX can forge ahead at a brisk pace without its leader in the building. But at the end of the day, they're responsible for executing his vision. And it's only a matter of time until he's back and in black. I'm, I don't know. That's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is your man Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.